Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and the love we have for our knitting communities. And we do it all with a little twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am Frivolous Dawn, and in our family's birth order, I am the fourth of eight children. Hello. And I am Frugal Miss Penny, and I am the eldest in the birth order. And we want to give you a hearty hello and welcome back to our returning viewers. It is just delightful to know that you're with us again this week. And it's even more delightful when you participate in our YouTube threads. We have had a delightful week reading all your comments. And for those of you who are first time viewers, we have no idea how you stumbled upon us, but we're so glad you did. Thanks for joining us. And we hope that you will glean a nugget or two from our fiber frolics. And without further ado, it's time to make sure you grab your knitting, your favorite note taking device, and a sense of humor because you're going to need it. This is episode 65 of the Frivolous and Frugal podcast. Take it away, Dawn. And, you know, we've had a little jump in our subscribers. So thank you if any of the new subscribers mm -hmm. are listening. And feel free to participate in um, our Ravelry discussion boards. We're Frivolous and Frugal podcast on there. And it's just been fun to see new people. So, totally agree. Um, thank you who's ever spreading the word. We appreciate it. Um, so let's start with what is around our mannequins next. <laughs> 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 yes, because it's obvious that I am not um, sporting anything today, because if I did, I would melt right before your very eyes. Um, our mannequins, a shared pattern today, the This Way Then That by Joanne Kiley. Just have to tell you, Dawn and I were both test knitters for this. It was a delight to knit. I really enjoyed it. And I'm sure Dawn did too. Um, I knit mine out of Opal and the real name. I'm going to read this from my paper, Dawn, okay? Because I'm quite pleased that I was able to um, uncover this. The full name of this yarn is Zverger Garn Opal Regenwald Rainforest. Yes, it's beautiful. And it is um, actually... Yeah, it's fingering weight. It's opal. We all know it by opal. It did not have a colorway. So I just put multi in my project page. And then what I did was I paired it with latte and llamas masquerade base. And it is in the peg leg point colorway. I will say it was a delight to knit. I knit mine on a size five, Dawn. I'll let you tell what you knit yours on. And I gave it um, two dollar signs for um the the fiber and the pattern what about you well i'm gonna go ditto because i don't i didn't look it up um <laughs> so this when joanne created this pattern it was created to use one skein of any self-striping sock yarn and then a complementary color and um yeah, it was nice to be a test knitter. Now, just for the record, I'm a horrible test knitter. Mm. Um, I don't pay attention to detail, so <laughs> I, I don't fit the qualifications, but bless Joanne's heart, she asked anyway. Um, and mine too is an opal. I have no idea what the solid is. If I had to guess, I bet it's an opal solid too, but I didn't put it in my project page. Um, and so it is knit, and you, you could probably do a better job with the discussion. Didn't we do this V first? Yes, we it did. It starts this right center. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So modular knitting, basically, uh, before it was really a big thing. And that's what I liked about it. It challenged me because you didn't know how it was going to come together. And it was another great lesson on how to pick up stitches as you're knitting, which you'll be able to share with us when you talk about what's on your needles. But I liked the modular knitting component of this. So brilliant design, Miss Joanne. Yes. And so again, if you have a, all of us, don't we have a skein of self-striping yarn that would be beautiful and an accent color. Um, I would agree with your um, readings for both the yarn and the um, pattern on the frugalometer. The other thing is, and I'm winging this, so I, I hope I'm not wrong. Joanne just released another pattern called Cedar oh, wow. Valley. It's a capelet. 
and it has lace and cables. I think it's in a uh, four or five different sizes, maybe. If you're into capelets, check out that pattern too. Um, it's on Ravelry or on the Magpie Cottage website. And uh, this is not a paid promotion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd it isn't. To, I'd have to fill out extra forms on YouTube. I don't want to do that. <laughs> and we um, can't, that's for sure. <laughs> We're not good with the required forms yeah. we're supposed to fill out. I've seen the shop model and it's fantastic. I it's in my I don't even know if it's officially in my queue on Ravelry, but um, I I usually don't wear capelets, so I'd have to think about that. But um, with capelets and ponchos being the rage right now, I just thought I would throw that out there. Absolutely. And what's around your neck? Boy, is this an older one too? This is called Pearless. Mm. as in no pearl stitches. It's by Rosemary Hill. Most people uh, probably know her too as Romy Hill. Um, this was when we did stars. Yes. Knit, knit stars one. This was a yarn that was available and it's by the uncommon thread in the heavenly DK colorway um, or heavenly DK base. The colorway is starlight. Um, I'm going to look quick till I get the number or my um, gauge, not my gauge, right? My needle size. It's a US seven. Um, I'm telling you up to the point I knit this, it was the most delightful yarn I'd ever worked with. It is amazing. And I gave the extra to Brianna and she's been um, using it as well. I think she might've done the exact same um, pattern. So I called the pattern a three on the frugalometer and the yarn a four. And it's one of the issues when there's unique colorways where uh, Dyer you know, provides a unique colorway for an event. Boy, when you want more of it, you just can't get it. And we didn't know ahead of time what we were knitting. So I think we just, did we just buy a couple of skeins? They were impulsive buys because our window yeah. to purchase was short. <laughs> and I don't know, we just impulsively bought. Yeah, and we purchased quite a bit, if I recall. Well, yes, we did. Um, yeah, so some of it I still have, so I should probably work on that. And I know you've given me some ears too. So anyway, this is Pearless by Romy Hill. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. I like it because I can loosen it up around the neck if I'm warm. And um, it just has, and this is another one that messed with my head. What is it lately? Anything that's modular or asymmetrical, my, I can't vision, I can't envision things that aren't there. <laughs> Or would that be called a hallucination? Okay. Um, and so I had to be coached through this. This was one of the mystery mania shawls we did at Magpies. And I read my project notes today and I started it several times and I tried different yarns until I was happy with the weight of yarn and the gauge. So um, that yeah. is a pattern I would knit again. I like it. I knit it in Mrs. Crosby's. Oh, yarn. That's right. I don't know. I really like that pattern. Yeah. yeah. What was the other one? Um, I first typed in this morning when I was looking for it, Brickless. I like Brickless too. And I gave that one away. I'd be tempted to do that because that was the right length for me and it wrapped around my neck really nice. Um, and I like the mind bending increases and decreases, which yeah. is what makes that beautiful weave lacy pattern. Dimensional, might I say. Yeah. Dimensional pattern on that. I can't ever envision when there's an angle change. <laughs> so even like when we built our house years ago, I had to walk through a similar house with a similar floor plan because I couldn't look at that blueprint and envision what it was. Mm -hmm. And so some people can look at it and they've got the, the image and you can do that. Um, I don't know if it's just a brain issue. <laughs> oh. No, we won't go into the neuroscience behind it, but... <laughs> Yes, it's the way we're wired. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Yeah, so um, what's on your needles? Actually, I cast on the Oslo hat <laughs> last night by Petite Knits. And Dawn and I discussed, and by the way, I need to ask you to forgive me. I was kind of grumpy about this pattern <laughs> last night. I didn't need to be grumpy. I am not using the Merino pattern. I am using the DK pattern where you hold two yarns together and you're going to, I'm sure you'll all recognize this color and you're going to say, isn't that the same yarn you knit your row by row sampler socks in? And I would have to say it most certainly is because I want it out of my stash. So I am knitting it in Mountain Colors Twizzlefoot, which is a bit of a barber Polish um, type fiber. 
it is fingering weight held double as the pattern suggested. The patterns by Petite Knits. One adjustment that I made that Dawn and I chatted about actually before, as we were, I was, I was casting on is I did a provisional cast on. Um, and so that's what it is. And um, I'm going to say for a pattern, it's probably for me for a hat pattern, a three and a half to a four on the frugalometer. And my yarn is a two and I am knitting this on a size four, US size four needle. Yeah, Harmony Desk is the name of this colorway. And you are in stockinette four inches. <laughs> I have volunteered to get a root canal just to make this more enjoyable, just for everyone to know. Um, it's, and I understand the importance of having a simple knit, but it's every <laughs> stitch is a knit stitch, Dawn. Oh my, I kept trying to poke my eyes out. My glasses prevented it. I just, because you know what I, I think it is, and this is why I was grumpy and I have to ask for your forgiveness. Um, the alliteration is nothing but knit stitch. Oh yeah, but you're changing yarns there. I am, I'm changing yarns in scenery. I only do it at appointments. So whether I'm in the dentist chair or at the doctor, it doesn't matter, I'm knitting. The, the venue's changed. So. I'm, I'm so torn at the doctor's office because I like to catch up on People Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to go there an hour before my appointment so I can catch up on magazines, so I can knit for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Because when they're on time, it irritates me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. It's like at the post office. Wait a minute. I can't be next in line. That's right. I, I'm going to volunteer to go to the back. Okay. That's right. <laughs> yep. oh, it's where we seek um, a little bit of uh, uh, solace. Solace. I couldn't think of the word. I kept thinking yes. Solaris and that's not right. No, it isn't. Right. So speaking of words, what's on your needles? <laughs> I'm having neuropathway issues today. Thoughts are not it's getting through. <laughs> Um, what I am working on as we speak, because I'm at the end of a row, that would be good. I am uh, doing the Cal for the podcast for Vertices Unite. Now that is a paid for pattern by Stephen West. And I realized, why do I always say my dear Stephen West? Like, Because you are fond of him. I am fond of him, but it's not like I know him. <laughs> well, you've got your picture with him. <laughs> and you've taken a class with him. So I was going to look, this was um, an older pattern that's really starting to get a lot of play again. There's several podcasters like the um, the guys, the two guys hustle. I would have to go back and look in my notes, but we'll put it in the show notes. Sure. Yeah. Um, anyway. <laughs> it's a great video that they do. They do an interview with him and Steven talks about it. Yeah, the fiber hustle. That's fiber, fiber hustle. hustle. Oh, good job. So um, it's six sections. I showed this last week, but there's section one on top. I am using Emma's silk base yarn. Um, the colorways are on my project page. Um, if you're not on Ravelry, let me know and I should, could shoot you those. But it's a gray and then a speckle. My section two, I use dire full yarn and that is in the slasher sock base. And that's this purple, again with the speckle. It is much more vibrantly purple than um, picking up on the screen. So there is actually a difference when you see it in person between those two. Section three is your pop of color. <laughs> and is there any other choice but pink, right? And here's where this has messed with my head all week. It's supposed to be a rectangle. If I hold it like this, it does start to resemble a rectangle. I couldn't get there in my head. So I tore it out twice, recounted, my stitch count was off. Um, and I finally had um, Jen, oh, who Jen Katz on Ravelry, she's doing it too. And she was able to show hers to me on Zoom and it made more sense. Here's where I'm picking up stitches. I like the, the way he has you pick up stitches. I think it creates a nice border. You get, it's huge. I'm just about at the halfway mark. Um, and so for me, this is going to be a typical Stephen West. Um, shawl. It, it'll go over a thousand yards, I'm sure. And there's two sizes, small and large. Of course, I'm doing the large. Um, I, it's on a US four. And on the frugalometer, I gave the pattern $3 signs and I gave the yarn um, $4 signs. Uh, all indie dyed. Now, <clears throat> these are all the colors. So the next sections are different combinations or just I a solid. So I'm looking forward to that as well. 
Um, if you're interested in seeing some of the other colorways that some of our viewers have put together, you need to go to our discussion board um, on Ravelry. The other thing is we are doing an open Zoom knit on the first and third Tuesday nights of the month. Again, the link is provided over there. And if you're knitting any of our cows, it doesn't matter which one, but there's another nice way for us to have discussions about where people are having issues in the pattern or if people are making modifications, it's kind of fun to see. So um, right now, if you follow the pattern on Ravelry um, or on Instagram, lots of people are making it in all different color combinations and stripes. And um, I just think it's kind of exciting. And then um, while we're squirrel while we're on the thing he came out with another shawl this week and it's huge the oh. quad wrangle spires five skeins i first said no 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 but i went to youtube and watched his video <laughs> you I'm know so what I'm, that's why you call him your dear stephen west he just has you wrapped around his he finger does and i'm saying no right now do you hear it no, no. no, no. <laughs> we know how that works yep. Cause I'm saving, I'm saving myself for his mystery knit along in October, which I'm sure will be another five skeins. Yes. So, um, but you know what? That quadrangle spires may be something we do as a knit along in 2022. Well, because the vertices unite this year, maybe next year we can do that. Yeah. Along with the other six things that we've said, we're going to, um, and you know, know, what's kind of nice about that. I had this weird thought of how many yarns were in there. You use one solid color three skeins of one solid color and then he used um the long running gradients now he used spin cycle i think it was um in different colors but there are so many beautiful yarns today that are at a lesser price point that have those beautiful long runs um i think we're going to see quite a few dyers come out with those since that pattern released um so yeah, anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to say no for now, but thank you. I did put it in my favorites, though, <laughs> just, just in case I get bored. So that is um, what's on my needles. And are you still monogamous? I am still monogamous. That's why I was struggling with stockinette. <laughs> okay, here, here you go. Watch. <laughs> All right. Project number two, this is all the same stuff you guys saw last week. They're big projects, so you're going to see them for a while. This is Glimer. This is a pattern by Jennifer Wiseman. It is a poncho. I'll show you the picture of it because it's a beautiful picture. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry. This design along the bottom with this little bit of lace is yes. what sold it for me. Um, and I am using Rowan felted tweed in the color 200, which is called Barbara. And is that beautiful? I am loving oh, it. What? Where the stitch marker is, is where I was last week. I what? am, I know, what? Um, 18 repeats and I just did six. So I'm a third of the way done. <laughs> so I'm gonna have this on my needles for uh, probably another month. I'm trying to do 24 rows a day. Um, doesn't always happen that way. And I did block it just so you know, because it made it a little easier to see the, the pattern. But I just think this is going to be so much fun to wear. I think so too, Dawn. And that is just a wonderful color for you. It's so perky and it just suits your complexion and yeah. your hair. And you know, roll, if you do Rowan felted tweed, I think now are they up to like 14 or 15 colorways? Really? So, and you wouldn't have to use Rowan, but um, I, I'm just going to go out on a wild goose chase and say that when this gets done, it'll probably be a class I teach <laughs> at Silver <laughs> Thimble. And the, and the, the, what do you call it? The frequent flyers in your classes are listening and they're <laughs> nodding and they're saying, yeah. absolutely, it's going to be a class. And I think they may have the entire line of felted tweed there. So that is nice. Is um, it Silver Thimble? Yeah, Silver Thimble okay. in Green Bay, Wisconsin for those. I never say Wisconsin or U.S. I probably should. Also, I realize we only use U.S. needle sizes. So I think uh, any of our viewers who use millimeters probably know those conversions much better than me trying to figure them out. So, well, and that would be hard for you because you threw away all the wrappers for your needles. I do. And it's on the wrappers. 
the package. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I'm not going to start saving them. <laughs> <laughs> that is it on the US four and five. On the frugalometer, I gave the pattern three dollar signs and I gave the yarn four dollar signs. Um, and remember, when you buy Rowan Tweed, don't make the mistake I did. They're in 50 gram balls, not in 100 gram balls. So I needed to mm. get a little bit more than I initially thought. I bet you did. Yeah. Now, the last thing I'll share on my needles is um, let me get this here. The Indira. Is, am I pronouncing that right, Penny? I think so. Um, we looked it up. It's Japanese origin. It had, that's its um language origin so as best as we know that's the way it is this is by vanessa smith designs i think i said a different name last week a different last Wait a minute. name is this the one we looked up no this is not disregard everything i said this is not a japanese derivation so sorry i got it mixed up with that other one we looked up oh yeah i remember i forget what that one was called but yes okay. so this is my um let me see, where did it go? It was right here, it must have fell. With right. that other project bag you're looking for. Can you believe I've lost an entire project? How do you do that? No, okay, I'll find it somewhere. Here it oh. is, it fell. Oh, did it? Okay, let's Guys, see. Guys, oh. Oh, Dawn, it's that's... in the Bobby and May. And that's actually a fairly good picture of the color, maybe a tad darker. I'll come in on it because you can see the mohair fuzz or the halo. <laughs> oh, that is excellent right there. Yes, it is. Oh, right there, Dawn. Along the so edges, cool. you can see the. That is gorgeous. So you did a provisional cast on. I did. And you can see that it's uh, getting a little longer where it'll go lower on the neck. I just hit the halfway point. It's a 48 row repeat. I thought you repeated it five times. So here's what the pattern says. Repeat five times and then repeat row one to 47 one more time. <laughs> so thinking, that means six, right? One short row of six. So I literally just finished the third repeat. So um, yeah. And for me, it's a little bit of a challenge because you follow cable patterns and then you follow lace patterns. And um, so I literally have to focus on this to make sure I'm following the right pattern. I lobby in May, you guys, the, the fingering weight is cash merino um, in the blue royale colorway. And then the silk mohair is in the exact same colorway. This was a kit that you could buy um, on lobby in May's site. So why wouldn't you? <laughs> All right. Now, is that marker right there below your left hand? Is that where you were last week? Nope, I just moved it because it was still down here at the bottom. <laughs> so I'll, I'll leave it here for next week. I think last week I had finished maybe the second repeat. I think so. Gee whiz, um, you're doing well. Wow, gosh, I could just sit here and stare at this. Yep, I think I'm going to keep this one actually. So um, let me should. give you some uh, details um, on a US 4 and a US 6. On the frugalometer, <laughs> um, I'm going to go four for the pattern and I'm going to ping my five um, on the yarn. So um, yeah, it is it, it is a splurge and it is delightful to feel that in your hand, that, that cashmere in there. So again, I'm going to bet that's a couple more weeks out for me if I just hit the halfway mark. So those are the three things. Now, the other things constantly on my needles is our year-long project for tenacity. Um, I'll show that the next time Brianna is able to join us because she's working on that too. And then I started this blanket a few months ago for my brother's granddaughter. I cannot find it. I know the bag it's in. I know what it looks like. We did some shuffling in the house to put some new flooring down. And obviously I shuffled it somewhere <laughs> where I don't know. So um, maybe I'll put out a finder's fee if anybody can find it. <laughs> But until that time, uh, that's just kind of in limbo because I don't know where it's at. All right, that is what's on my needles. So do you have anything off your needles? Yes, ma'am, I do. Two projects. That's Stop. one of the monogamous knitting lessons number one. You complete projects, <laughs> right? So these are not large projects like yours. So this will be, I am sure, very quick. And it should be fairly painless. All right. <laughs> 
So I followed your lead and did the four color marled cowl. Oh, look at and that. And I really enjoyed knitting it. It was nice. It's by Petra Breakstone. I knitted in the same yarn you did, Dawn. It's Barocco Quinoa, which has been discontinued in the black bean. I think that's kind of funny. In the black <laughs> bean, the cracked pepper, the rose and light blue colorways. Like so yes, it was a nice knit. It was my first time to marl colors because I've, I'm typically not a fan of marling or fading, but I enjoyed it. So on the frugalometer, I gave the yarn $3 signs and the pattern I gave uh, $1 sign. Um, if you buy this, you can't get it, it's discontinued, but again, 50 gram balls. And if you buy it at full price, it can be pricey. And I knit this on a size five, which I went up one needle size from what the pattern called for. And I'm glad I did because I would go up to a six the next time I knit it. Yeah, I'd like a little bit looser fabric. This is a bit too tight for me and close. Yeah, I start teaching that class this week. And I think I'm going to make that suggestion for people who want to go up needle sizes. Um, and you know that quinoa has cotton in it so yes. it doesn't have that super silky drape so I'd be interested in using some of my scraps sometime or my leftovers and see what that would do uh, or would silk be too drapey I don't know I guess but, it depends on your preference for how you want to wear a cowl I don't like anything real close to my neck I don't like anything stiff unless it's a regular collar so I don't want it right up here so I would want something drapey. Okay, so can you put that back up one more thing? Okay. Did you have quite a bit of yarn left? Oh, on every color but the black. The yeah. Dark black. Um, so, I did not have much, but yeah, oodles so you know, left. Here. The pattern, it starts off, or they call them thin lines up top, and then they get wider down below? Uh, the opposite. Oh, the opposite. The so pattern. you easily could keep going with that or make the thinner stripes wide if you wanted to use up all your yarn. Yes. And what I chose to do, I was going to make it longer, but because it's so stiff, I thought, I don't yeah. need any more. I have enough rolls of my own. I don't <laughs> need this. And on top of it. So anyway, if, yeah. it, if it could somehow do a chin lift, maybe. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so anyway, yeah. Nice um, pattern. It is a nice pattern. And then my second finished object is um, bed socks. And what? this is a pattern, they're bed socks. So this is a pattern that I took from, it's called Baba's Bed Socks. That's literally the name. Baba is Cantonese for Papa. So this, or daddy. Um, so this particular sock is designed by Michelle Bernstein. But I have made oodles of modifications, which are on my project page. I knit with two strands of worsted held together because they're much warmer. And wow. I really had to increase the neck so that they don't slip off at night. And then I also used the row by row sampler sock pattern heel, or um, I'm sorry, not heel. I did the um, short row heel and then used the row by row sampler sock for my rounded toe. I used their instructions. So thank you for that, Miss Irene. And also, I was reminded by several of our viewers this week on YouTube to put those stitch uh. markers every 10 rows, which I remembered. And by the way, these are markers that were given to us by Miss Karen from Karen's Hobby Room. If you need stitch markers or anything of that sort, please visit her show or visit her um, shop on Etsy or her website at karenshobbyroom.com. I'll put those links in the show notes. So anyway, yeah, both of them are finished and I had just a small amount of yarn left and that's what I used for my provisional cast on. Stop so the this madness. Was nearly, this was nearly 400 yards of yarn in Plymouth Encore in the blue twist colorway. And those are on for your- US size nine. These are for Mike. Wow. I have never thought about doing worsted weight house socks. That's brilliant. Um, He doesn't wear them around the house because they're no. too slippery yeah. on the floors, but at night to keep his feet warm. Yeah. 
and he doesn't care about the color of yarn. And this again is another yarn that's been in my stash probably since the early 2000s. I just want to get rid of it. So I just used it to knit, knit these up for him real quick this week. Wow. And they're really not that difficult. I knit these in, I think, three days, just in my evening knitting. Wow, I like those. Yeah, so that's it. I have nothing off my needles. Well, you've got huge projects. So. Yeah. So what is new at Frivolous and Frugal? Well, I'll tell you what, we have oodles of things going as always. So let me quickly go over the cows. And please know that Dawn has set up threads and Ravelry. So we have and encourage your participation in those. It's from those threads that we pick our gifts and our giveaways. And speaking of gifts and giveaways, we have a YouTube giveaway Yay. from episode 64. Our question was, what is your favorite accoutrement, knitting accoutrement and why? I don't know about you, Dawn, but I got oodles of ideas and oodles of surprises. We yes, kind of tallied sure. last night and the top winners were YouTube yep. and the internet, yep. great resources. And with that, can we say technology? Because many people said their iPad was their, their favorite accoutrement, stitch markers and row counters. Yeah. Isn't that something? I wouldn't have guessed that going into this. No, I would not have either. I I would have guessed some, you know, quaint little um, gadget that somebody picked up, but lots of ideas, lots of good suggestions and reminders. So it was wonderful. What would you say is your favorite accoutrement? That's a really good question. I've got to say it's, it's got to be my row counters. Because I've tried tally marks. They don't work as well for me. I have tried oodles of different things. I've, when, when in a pinch, I'll use yarn to be a stitch marker. I can make a little loop and I can get by. I've just not found anything suitable and reliable, such as for a stitch, uh, for a row counter. Yeah. yeah. What about you? Um, I would say mine is my right side marker. I rely on that on every project I do. Um, yeah, so, and even when I teach beginning knitting, I give them all one because I just think in the beginning, I, you know, if you're just learning, you know, garter stitch, it's hard to differentiate right from wrong mm -hmm. sides. So I would say I use, I don't use row counters. That's was one thing I was intrigued by. You always have that red one where you turn. Yeah, I have it. Mm -hmm. And some people have the ones that click. Some people are using the app called row counter. Um, oh, yes or knit companion. So I'm intrigued by all of them. I, I do the posty notes and the tally marks. Right. So, and that works for you. Well, as long as you don't lose the posty note. That's what happened to me. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh. Yeah. Oh, and a word to the wise. If you use the posty note, put the name of the pattern on the top of the posty <laughs> note. I mixed up two post-it notes years ago. That's I'm funny. thinking, yeah. So I have my cowl one right here. Uh -huh. And I did. You must have taught me that. I put the name of the pattern up top. Do it. Yep. But again, if this gets lost, I'm lost. Mm -hmm. So the row counters are. Now, um, one thing I will say, and this is a frugal comment, all right, regardless <laughs> of how it sounds. Um, when you're buying your row counters, I would not encourage you to go cheap because I have done so. I have, some, I have some row counters that they don't click. They just kind of spin. And that has messed me up because I paid, you know, three cents for it. So um, I, I'm with Miss Renee and others. I like my clover row counters. They have nice edges where they'll sit on the table and keep from rolling. They click nicely. Um, yeah. And again, we aren't, we don't receive anything from clover, but <laughs> I would just say that's one area you don't want to chintz. And if you use the tally marks, you know how you can press, depress yeah. the top and it advances the counter. Um, that too is dangerous if you're using it for a traveling project because in your bag, it can get advanced. And that has happened to me too, which is why I no longer use those. I stick with my twist. 
And somebody wrote that they use a lockable row counter. Yes. And so I that would be, all about. but then you need a row counter for every project. You can't flip them between projects. No, no, no. Right. Because then again, you're relying on notes that can right. easily find their way right. to yeah. places that we've not dusted in in 43 years. <laughs> so, not that I haven't found a couple of things like that. Anyway, so we forgot to announce the winner. Oh, oh, we're so sorry. I bet you've been waiting for bated breath. All right. Or not for bated breath, with bated breath. <laughs> it's been one of those mornings and I have a feeling it's not going to get much better. <laughs> I would agree. Okay. You should have seen the pre-show. That was bad. All right. Our winner for the episode 46 giveaway on favorite accoutrements is Miss Wendy Bonsai. We are so happy that you entered into that discussion and you were one who said YouTube was your favorite accoutrement because of research. So Miss Wendy, here's how this works. Please choose a pattern off of Ravelry of your choice, not to exceed $10 and send the name of that pattern to Dawn and she will purchase it for you. Thanks so much for participating. And again, special thanks and um, kudos to whomever gave us that cash prize because we have been yeah. able to bless several people with that. Agreed. Um, our next giveaway will be episode 68. And again, we will feature a question that you will respond to if you want to enter and be um, selected or at least in the running for a selection of a gift. Um, we have another giveaway coming up in episode 66 for the Finish Fix Flip or Frog It Cal. We choose that winner from the thread in Ravelry. So if you have something you've been thinking about putting up, this week is the week to do it. Now, our July Hat Cal, we have a new pattern for July. This is the August Hat by Sarah Solomon. And so you will find that I believe it is a free pattern on Ravelry. So we'll be knitting that together if you'd like to join us. And we'll give a giveaway prize later toward the end of July for that or in the beginning of August. Our July ornament pattern for this cow is Deck the Halls with Lace. And this is a, an ornament bobble, a ball, and it is written by Kelly Jensen. And again, we have a thread for that. Please feel free to cast on and join us. It's only two weeks away from the ending of our sweet little nothing cow knit along. So if you have anything on your needles that you'd like to share, please put that up in the thread. Our final giveaway will be at the end of the month. And as Dawn mentioned, Vertices Unite, Cal, if you'd like to join us, please do that. If you need a little inspiration or encouragement, go to the Thread in Ravelry and take a look at some of the beautiful projects the community is knitting. Always, always inspiring and really a little bit um, overwhelming to see the beautiful work and the color combinations that people are using. Yep. Absolutely. And <clears throat> this is because someone suggested it. We have another cow that's going to be starting on September 1st. And it's another Stephen <laughs> West shawl. And it is the Curvette shawl. So if you're interested in joining, start looking through your stash now to see what might work for that shawl. And that will be a September 1st cast on. And we are in the countdown. We only have a couple weeks left before we have our very first mini meetup, the Frivolous and Frugal mini meetup in Chicago. We have a thread in Ravelry about that as well. And I will give you just a quick overview. Once again, this is not fancy. We are not... I'm doing this for Dawn's sake. We are not going over the top with prizes and table decorations. We are coming to Chicago just to knit with you all and to get to know you. So please don't expect anything like catered food, mints on your head, the head of your, the pillow of your bed in the hotel room. We're not going to have anything like that. We will have a tea and coffee and water bar. Um, 
So bring your own mug if you'd like. And we'll have a table for people to bring individually wrapped snacks if they'd like to share them. But our intention is to do nothing but build up the knitting community. Get to know you. We want to know who you are, why you knit. We also want you to bring things that you'd like to share for show and tell. So if you have a project that you would like to share with the rest of us, please bring it. We also have a couple of trips planned to the Elgin Knitworks Knit Shop. So that will take place on Saturday. And I do believe there are still some rooms available in our block if you want to spend the night. So make sure you go to the Thread and Ravelry. Um, we're following the COVID guidelines for the hotel. So please don't ask us what to do. Please look at the hotel's guidelines. All right, Dawn, <clears throat> I've got those. Did I miss any details on those events or CALS? I don't think so. Um, just uh, talk about our virtual midnight. Yeah, I will. Gonna, okay, all right. So we are coming toward the end of uh, the month. We will have our virtual daytime knit. That's going to be June or June, July 24th from 10 to 12 uh, Central Standard Time. As always, we'll try to have the link up in Ravelry an hour before the event, as well as emailed to those who are not on Ravelry. And if you aren't on Ravelry, just send me an email and I'll add your name to the list. Um, it is always a choose your own level of participation. It is a time of nothing but chatting about knitting. So this is a great forum for you to bring your questions, your conundrums, your thoughts, your ideas. If you'd like to have others give you some feedback, this is the place to do it. Our community is not only experienced, but they're gracious when it comes to sharing tidbits and tips and guiding you to even different resources if that's what you need. So please join us on that. Our August virtual knit night is or was scheduled for August 14th. We are canceling that nighttime knitting event. It is the weekend of our family reunion. So we will not have a nighttime virtual event during August, but we'll go back to the fourth Saturday in August for our daytime event. And <clears throat> that's all I have for events, Dawn. Yeah, I think that is all I have as well. Okay, so you haven't planned anything behind my back that well, you're keeping secret from me. You know, we okay. did that virtual knit night a few weeks ago, didn't we? Uh, yes. Okay. We the did. enabling has got to stop. Oh. We, okay, when somebody mentioned a deal going on, you could see people <laughs> on Zoom with their phones. And it, it really became um, enabling. So I may have purchased during that event again that has got to stop <laughs> so um is it can you lock me into zoom where i i can't get to any other browser because oh, i could put you on a lockdown browser <laughs> yes <laughs> ma'am i could please <laughs> either, do either yes. that or i could invite your husband to sit next to you throughout <laughs> the entire event <laughs> and give him the mouse yeah. and your phone there you go we may have to do a, a combination thereof yes it's called an intervention <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> Before we go into honorable mentions, what are you learning this week? You know, I am learning for me the power of daily knitting goals. So I realized I have, of the projects I have on the needles right now, three of them take concentration. And that means I can't be watching YouTubes or trying to have a discussion with my family or anything like that. I need quiet surroundings. And I have nothing really not very many simple things on the needles that I can just grab like during Zoom or when I'm waiting for uh, my son. So what I did is I took those three projects and I gave myself a realistic goal. I think I, I really thought six weeks for each of them, maybe even longer. And I just figured out how many rows is feasible for me to knit a day based on the time I have available. And you know what? I don't meet those goals every day. I would say maybe five days out of the week, but at least now I have it plotted out and I feel like I'm getting slow progress on all of them. I was tempted to kind of put a couple on hold and just really try to finish one or two, but I love all three of them. So I'm just thinking knitting daily goals or knit daily knitting goals are working well for me right now. And um, not that I get overwhelmed or anything like that. 
I have like six other ones in my head I want to do next. So I need to see these through to completion. Um, I do not want to get back into where I have UFOs all over. So I'm going to try to stay on track daily, at least have a goal in mind. And if I don't make it, no big deal. But I'm hoping just to see the slow progress and get these done. Because, you know, the curvette that we do um, September 1st is a five skein shawl. If you do the large size, and why wouldn't yeah. you? <laughs> but you know, you, you see, I could easily just keep casting on, casting on, casting on, and never get anything finished. Um, I did that for many years, and it took several years to get out of that. <laughs> so I'm going to try really hard. So keep me, um, keep me focused to um, see things through to completion. So I'm not monogamous, but I would like to be able to complete projects. So. I can report back to see. And then sometime let's think about, somebody asked me how we were doing with our annual goals that we set out at the beginning of the year. So maybe sometime we can just chat a little bit. I hope about, somebody wrote mine down because. Yeah. <laughs> We'd have to go back and watch a podcast or something, wouldn't we? Oh, my God, eons ago. It does. Yeah. And I, you know, that's why I'm not very good with goal setting. They say you have to, in they say you have to keep it in front of you. Yeah. It's a post-it note. I can't keep post-it notes. I'm going to have to figure out another way to keep my goals before me. Right. Because, oh. and you know, they're just goals. They're not like we didn't cement them in. That's because, why I don't make them. Who cares? Yeah, I know. And then things change. Like oh, Lobby Anna May had a sale. <laughs> What's a girl to do? <laughs> Somebody double dog dares me, you know, so, um, and I'm not saying, I just think it's interesting to look back in six months or for six months and see how are we doing. So just so you know, I do have my Microsoft Excel going for yarn that I've purchased versus yarn that I've knit. So I may have to swallow my pride when I give those numbers. <laughs> okay, so for the record, I just don't do goals, right? Yeah. I say I do, but I don't go back and visit them. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm at, and I'm not going to make an apology for that. The apology is saying I would make goals. Uh, just, it doesn't work. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure I could use some therapy for that, too. Okay. So who and, are the honorable mentions this week? Well, do you mind if I share what I'm learning? Oh, no. <laughs> So much for goals. I can't even keep the goal for this podcast straight. You right. monitoring the agenda, for heaven's sakes. Um, my goals, it's simple, Dawn. I have to remain humble enough and keep my ears to the ground to hear suggestions from other knitters. I know yeah. it's simple, but just reminding me to put these stitch markers in every row. I think I got to a place in my knitting, and it's happened in ebbs and flows where I think I know it all, right? I know what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. But when you just listen from our events and from our threads, people have lots of nuggets of wisdom. Yeah. And I just, I humbled myself and thought, you know what? I do need these reminders. These are wonderful tips. I don't know it all. And I don't ever want to think that I do know it all. So that was the lesson I learned this week. It was a wonderful reminder. Thank you to all of you who suggested yeah. that. That is good. It also helps you in case you have to set it down mm -hmm. and walk away. You at least don't have to hope you remembered, you know, right. where you were. Right. So yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. Okay. Now to honorable mentions. We do have two this week. Miss Irene from the Three Ply Podcast. You and Miss Joyce are too kind and too sweet to us, okay? You just blessed us this week. Both Dawn and I um, are wanted to cast on the Get Shorty Sock, and we are going to do that. And your gift of the pattern to us was yeah. very, very thoughtful and very gracious. So thank you, ladies. You know we love you, and um, we cannot wait to hug your necks again here in just a couple of weeks. So thank you very much. Our second honorable mention is you will likely see it when you view this podcast, Miss Angela. 
Miss Angela volunteered to create our new opening video for our podcast. So if you don't see it with this one, you'll see it for the next one. Darlin, you have no idea how that is deeply appreciated by us. We do not have the tech ability that you have, and yet you put together a wonderful video. And we appreciate you because you knew going into it that Frugal was paying and she doesn't pay. So you did this out of the kindness of your heart. And that kind of gracious giving yeah. is not only refreshing, but it's humbling. And it's something we just don't see as much as we wish we would. So thank you for being an example to the rest of us, both you and Miss Irene and Miss Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add to that, Dawn? Yep. Love those ladies. So. I know we do. And speaking of love, we love our faithful Nikki. We do. And she always has a little tidbit in every episode. And her segment is what would Nikki say? So this is, and if this is your first time watching us, we just have to let you know, Nikki is number three in the birth order. She does not knit. She does not knit. She is a golfer and a cross stitcher, but she has so faithfully come alongside us all these years. She is our statistician, our note taker, our encourager, our cheerleader. She is our, yeah, our, our traveling companion. And she faithfully attends all of our events. And so she started contributing. And this week's contribution is this. Every day you need to do, or I'm sorry, every day you need to take a break and relax. Spend that time doing something you love to do. Isn't that the truth? Yeah, and it's that simple, isn't it? It is that simple. She is on the golf course five days a week. Yep. She, I mean, she is practicing what she preaches here. So thank you, sis, for reminding us that we do need to take a moment every day to relax. And um, we are going to do something that we love to do, and that is knit. And since we're going to be knitting, Dawn and I would like to wish you a week full of knitting. And we hope that your week is not just full of knitting, but that it's a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. Thanks so much for joining us for episode 65. We have enjoyed visiting with you. So until episode 66, Take care. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.